Hey guys, so this is our basic tool, pruning tool introductory video. Uh, most people when they think about pruning, they think about these things. Guess what? This isn't pruning. We're going to put those over here in the bucket. We're going to get rid of those, right? So we're going to talk about hand pruning and the different kinds of tools that you can use. These are the hand pruners that we've talked about, right? Um, remember we want what are called scissor types. These are Felco's, probably my favorite uh, of all. They're Swedish. The steel lasts forever. Uh, here's a little pruning sheath you can put right on your belt with a clip, very handy. Uh, one thing, the reason I like the Falcos is you can take them apart. They come with this little tool. You can pull them apart. I'll do this really quick. So you can take out the blades. Oh, wait, hold on. I didn't loosen this. You can take off the blades and sharpen them. You can buy new blades. You can buy new springs. You can buy everything new or sharpen them and reuse them for years. I actually still have mine from a long time ago. So they completely pull apart. You can resharpen them. I'll show you a sharpening demo we're gonna have later. I'll do a video on sharpening. So these are Falco's. These are some other brands. ARS is becoming a pretty popular brand. These are Corona's. Corona's are getting better than they used to be. These, they look like Falco's, don't they? And guess what, they're junk. They're made in Taiwan. I bought these for the students a couple years ago and they lasted literally like a few classes and they're dull and they just don't work well. I also wanted to show you this. This is a Falco. Personally, I don't care for this. If you had really big hands, but if you were pruning all day, the handle actually rotates. So it would take some of the pressure off of your hand on the handle all the time. But for me, my hands aren't big enough and I'm, I'm not comfortable with them. But for people with big hands that prune all day, that would be a good option. These I would call more for uh, tip pruning, um, like herbaceous plants. Uh, we talked about pinching. So instead of using your fingers, if you don't have nails, you would use something like that. These are also used, both of these came out of our greenhouse because we keep them there for working in the greenhouse. Lopers, loppers, whatever you like to say, I call them uh, lopping shears to lop off branches. They're basically a bigger version of a hand pruner, right? So again, I got a pair of Falcos. These have been around for years. Um, they work really well for branches up to about an inch and a half. You don't want to shove in as much as you can. You want to keep it reasonable. These are both Coronas. Um, this particular one is not bad. This red one I consider a homeowner version. Um, I do have a lot of them for the class just because they're inexpensive and we only use them a couple times a year. All right, so we started off throwing the shears in the garbage, but I do have a pair of head shears here. Yes, periodically we're gonna shear if we want formal type things, right? Um, this is an amazing pair of Aksumi out of Japan. I've had these for 20 years in the nursery. They're still sharp, they cut amazing when I have to shear uh, my shrubs. They're, they're really something. They're about a hundred bucks, but uh, they're worth it if they last that long. All right, so regarding um, pruning saws, the first couple I have here are kind of old. You don't see these much anymore. Uh, we did talk in class about the number of teeth, and you remember that the teeth point backwards, right? So by pounding backwards, that means that blade cuts on the pull. So when I pull it through the wood, it's gonna cut. And if you remember the teeth, large teeth mean a quick cut, but a rough cut. Smaller teeth, it's a little slower to cut, but it's a smoother, finer cut. Again, we don't generally use these much anymore because now they've all become these hybrids. Here's some more Falcos, but these, instead of having the blade just one way, I don't know how well you can see that, but they're actually cut on both sides. These things cut through trees like butter. It is amazing how fast they cut. Extremely sharp. When you first get them, they're like surgical scalpel. You've got to be really, really careful with them. So these are designed to fit onto your, again, your um, belt. We've got a couple different sizes here. AM Leonard is a large supplier of landscape supplies. They are now doing takeoffs on all kinds of pruning supplies, shovels. This is one of their uh, hand saws. I just got it. Um, again, it has that same really serrated teeth. So when it's new, it works great. I don't know how it's gonna work after a couple of years. These are all examples of folding saws. So these you can actually put in your pocket. It folds out, it locks, I can prune with it, and then I can close it back up. So these are all examples of those. These are also AM Leonard. The orange is usually AM Leonard. This red is Corona. Here's a small little Japanese hand saw. And as old as that is, and it's rusty from being out in classes in the rain, it's still extremely sharp. And then here's a small little Corona. The last thing I'll say on this regarding sizes, don't get a small, if you use something like this, or certainly the small Japanese one or the Corona, 
on, on larger branches, you're going you're gonna to be cutting too much, and eventually some people that have got a couple of them, students have broke, where they go back in and it catches the blade and it snaps it. So you're better off, if you can, to have a bigger, a bigger particular blade. And then finally, this here is a saw that you never want to use for pruning. This is called a bow saw. And the reason you don't use it is if you can see the blade bends a lot. So when you start to make a cut through a branch, what's going to happen is that thing's going to get a mind of its own and it's going to curve and it's going to come out where you don't want it to. The only reason I would use these, remember, big teeth, fast cutting, this thing will cut through stuff like crazy. It's just really rough and ugly. But if I'm cutting down an old shrub or, or a plant that I just want to get it out of the way really quick, I don't care about quality, this is great for that. But you never use it to actually do a finished pruning cut, just for quick cuts. Uh, and then finally, I've got a chainsaw, right, for bigger. So we're moving up, hand pruning for small stuff, lopping for up to maybe two inch, inch and a half. When we get to the saws, that's bigger stuff. And then when we get, depending on how much you want to cut by hand, this is a small chainsaw, very tiny homeowner uh, type chainsaw. I use this for limbing trees when I drop them. I have a bigger one for dropping trees. And then over here, we have our pole pruning equipment. So as the name implies, I've got a pruner. On the end, here's my pruner. And here's my bowl, right? So I can hold this up quite a ways. I can actually add on, these are add-ons, so I can put another six foot onto this. Uh, you can put another one and make it 18 feet, but trust me, it's very awkward. Um, so those are uh, uh, called pole pruners. Again, I've probably got five or six different styles back at the school, uh, different brands, different styles, uh, but they're all the same concept. This one in particular, it's kind of interesting because it has a double pulley system, if you look. So it's supposed to make it a little easier to cut through wood. I usually, when I'm up, and I'll demonstrate this when I'm pruning, but I wrap my hand around the rope to pull to make it a little easier. Uh, and then finally, we have our pole, our pole uh, saws. Oh, wait, I have one more pole pruner. This is neat in one respect, but it's junk in another. It's neat because I can telescope it out like this. So instead of having to add six feet all at once, I can just add two feet if I need, or four feet. So I love the handle. The problem is the head. The head is junk. It's very cheap. Whoop, it's very cheap, um, not good metal. Uh, and it's what I'm gonna call an anvil, anvil type. If you remember in class, we talked about bypass and anvil. So hold on, just stay there. So for bypass pruners, I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear this with the cars going by. Remember, we wanna hear the swishy, swishy, swishy. So those two blades are going, that blade is going past that part, so it's cutting like a pair of scissors. You've got two edges going against each other. Versus an anvil, an anvil pruner, you've got one piece of steel like this and the blade comes down on it. Think of uh, Wiley Coyote and the uh, Roadrunner, right? He's always chasing them around with his anvil, trying to hit him on the head. It doesn't work. This is like the same concept. So I don't know if you can see this. When you pull the blade, it's gonna pinch the branch in between these two pieces of steel. And literally you're forcing the blade through it rather than cutting it. You're pushing it through. So it's really, this again, homeowner, fine. It's inexpensive, it extends, but this head is not a commercial grade uh, head. Again, these better pruning heads, they cost 100 to $150 a piece, just for the head. You buy the head and the pole separate, and then you mount them. And then the last thing I got over here is pole saws. So again, for reaching branches up in a tree, this is designed to actually, once you cut a branch off, you can pull it out of the tree with it. Uh, again, you can add more extensions. So it's pretty handy. Uh, again, we'll do some tree pruning with these and show you how those are used. And then finally, another pole saw, but this one's on an awesome handle that is also extendable. So I can extend it out. So um, that's the last thing I'm gonna show you there. Hold on a minute, I got one more thing to show you. Just stay there, stay there. Here it comes. I want you to say hello to my little friend. This is a pole tree saw, pole, a pruning power saw, right? This is a chainsaw with a gasoline engine. You can extend it out another five feet. It's hard to use for much more than an hour because it's very top heavy. Um, you gotta have your arm way back here and another one way up there. It's very awkward to use, but for certain branches, it's a great choice. Okay guys, that's basic tools 101. See you later.